And welcome back to uh, the LinkedIn Logs, the business LinkedIn influencer, linked linked influencer uh, podcast for the website <laughs> cpluscality.com. Like I just said, that's a website. Go there. I was when I when I said LinkedIn influencer, I was looking at the word spelled out on the Notion page, thinking I did not say it correctly, and then I realized LinkedIn. An influencer. That's the that's the portmanteau. Is the word I put together. So then I just thought, that's not right. And then I thought it is right. LinkedIn influencer. My journey to becoming a LinkedIn influencer. That's the tagline of this podcast. Episode thirty nine. Here we go. If you're watching the video, just let me take a sweet little sip using one of the many metal straws I have, and these nice uh, crate and barrel glasses. Of my iced coffee, baby. <laughs> this is all I have in my life. I'm wearing a nice Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> What's been going on? Uh, last week, I don't know, I think I applied to roughly 20 plus jobs, I believe. Mostly on the Indeed platform because it looks like, to me at least, LinkedIn is drying up. And one of the one of the people for the jobs I applied to for uh, responded back to me <clears throat> for a uh, they're the they're one of two people that looked at my application between today's the twenty eighth a, a a handful of people that never looked at my application but anyway. Uh, I also applied to this thing called Food, Faith, and Fitness. <laughs> and I was like, it's a fitness blog. And then I clicked around on the website and I was like, all right, well. You know, it's got a good a good, a good amount of all three. But I applied to this YouTube content creator. I'm not going to be coy. I'm not going to say their name. But I'm not going to be coy with the position is. You know, I love the word content. <clears throat> I applied to that. They seem legit. I looked up the, the the place. It's over there in Los Angeles, California. You know the city of angels is what Los Angeles means. I applied on I believe Wednesday. Then on Thursday I got a resp- I received a response back and I got. We need to stop. You know what I realize is I re- I read a lot. I'm not saying I'm the smartest person in the world because I am incredibly stupid but i read a lot read a lot of books read a lot of news stuff (laughs) stuff read a lot of feature pieces and one thing i notice in looking at comments on the internet be it the cesspool of youtube comments which is which is why i have um comment blockers on firefox and chrome very true. I do not like YouTube comments. But when you watch on an iPad or your phone, you you can't escape them because sometimes they just pop right there below the video. Uh, repeating like the same line. I'm, if I'm watching a 30 second clip of The Simpsons, I know exactly what is said in the video. Like it's whatever. You don't have to repeat the line anyway. But YouTube comments, TikTok comments, uh, Reddit comments, people increasingly write like they like they are uh, <laughs> Chayefsky, <laughs> like they're modern day philosophers, and they do the little space thing. They do like one line of words of text, and then another, and then the space, and then two lines of text, and then space. It's all everybody writes the same. But I, you know, I realized recently is that people use the word got and it makes them seem like, oh, he got shot. You know, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 just putting got inserting. I can't think of any other example. That was, me, that was me trying to come up with examples. And uh, I'm just I just realized that uh, we use it way too much that and honestly thing, things along those line things along those line <laughs> things along those lines. I feel like we got we have we have to reel we got <laughs> we have to reel these 
back in. I feel like we're getting dumber. People are forgetting how to write. Sometimes I pull out a pen and paper. I'm just like, oof, what's going on? (laughs) Anyway, this YouTube content creator position, it is part-time. And I did apply to it, obviously. The person reached out to me on Thursday. (laughs) And they wanted, they, they said they asked for a reel. Like a like a they they asked for pitches in their email in the email as well as a reel. First of all, I enjoyed not having to write a cover letter. It was fantastic. All I did was write maybe a three paragraph email with a total of twelve sentences, and I was so excited because I I'd come off of writing just a bunch of very crappy cover letters. And what stinks now is I believe some of these jobs, a lot of these jobs. Have AI, AI, AI software that knows that uh, if your thing, if your CV was written by, or CV, your cover letter was written by AI. And I change mine up constantly. Like if I, if I go to chat GPT, which is the, my preferred AI provider, if I go to chat GPT and I, and I, and I, and I say, I give it the parameters the details, my details, plus the details of the job. I'm, I'm, I'm changing words. I'm fixing phrases and everything. And yet, somehow, it still reads it. Maybe it's because I also write like a robot. The guy went to school for writing. Um, I applied. They asked for a reel. I said I'd get it to you before the weekend. At the time of this release, Memorial Day was the day before. Recording and release, excuse me. Which means that on, on Thursday when I when I received the email, and I promised something before the weekend, I ha- and then I had a I didn't have I didn't have to, but I went to see Mad Max Furiosa at one p.m. That meant that after the gym on Friday morning, and after grocery shopping, I had roughly two hours to do this. I did it in forty minutes, baby. I don't even think it was that much time. I wrote the reel. I pitched them an idea. It was about TikTok being sold um, for uh, because the U.S. Uh, is forcing the sale. So I, I, I made a two-minute story about that, and then I recorded it, and that was it. I didn't have to edit or anything. I did have to edit. <laughs> it's really funny. I... So I, I sent in... I sent in... The, and we also... I also noticed that on the internet, we also start... A lot of our sentences was so. So I also tried. I also tried to avoid that. I. That's why you got Obama over there. God. That's why you have Obama over there. Pausing. Pointing with his thumb. Honest. Got. So. Man. We all speak the same language. I'm stupid. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I pitched the I pitched the I pitched like three different stories because they because they asked for three different stories and they then I did that one the TikTok one when I sent in the video I thought I I had, I edited out all of my mistakes it's just me starting over I think I did like four or five I edited everything out with the exception of one <laughs> I sent it in I did not know the person responds back to me this is great. All right, we'll get back to you at some point next week, before the end of the week. And uh, <laughs> I go back, I I look at the video, <laughs> and the first thing is me going, oh, oh, man, oh, man, I messed up. Oh, no. <laughs> I didn't look at the video before I sent it out. <laughs> I, just, I just thought I cut what I thought were the mistakes. Turns out there was more. There we go. I, I did that, and hopefully something good comes from that. I don't know. There's other there's other places I applied. I even applied to Newsweek. They have a, a fellow position open. 3.4 stars rating on uh, Indeed. 14 reviews. I mean, that's a, that's a decent amount of <laughs> reviewers. But the well, the well is drying up. Well, I mean, it has been dry for months. I don't know how companies are going to operate. It it just seems to me that, A, I should have gotten a much better degree (laughs) at a much better school. (laughs) 
But B, it it just seems as though either you have to know somebody to land a position. You have to be extremely lucky. And people don't understand. A good portion of this is luck. And three, you just you have to you have to have uh be the person they're looking for. There was a there was an article I saw this morning about a Virginia-based IT company that was uh, uh that wanted to Virginia Virginia IT company that had to, that was practicing discriminatory practices nation of hiring. This is not a story I will link, but I will talk about it. This is from CBS News, written by Kate Gibson, Virginia Tech Company admonished for quote unquote whites only job posting. <laughs> it was inviting only white people to apply who and who were also U.S. born. Maybe I will link the story. I think I think it's better that I have links <laughs> for things. Isn't that crazy? Arthur Grant Technologies. They had a they had a, a job application for eligible candidates, quote, only born only US born white citizens, white, and those living within sixty miles of Dallas, Texas. Uh I believe the company had to pay a fine of like seven thousand dollars or so. Seven thousand five hundred. And then thirty one people complained about the job posting. And they each got $1,000 from the company. So $31,000 to compensate those who follow complaints with the Department of Labor. So they're paying $38,500. The company like, like denied the ad. <laughs> and they said it wasn't a disgruntled worker. No, no, come on, man. That's, that's so stupid. <laughs> oh, my God. But that's the world we live in. I think that's how uh, CNN operates. <laughs> that's how uh, Disney operates. <laughs> I'll keep going. That's how Paramount operates. I'm burning bridges, baby. <laughs> no, nobody listen to this show. It's fine. Okay. The final story. There was something else written here, but I think this is more of a constitutional thing. In fact, I will move it over. As I am talking, right now as we speak, I can multitask. I can multitask. I'm finished already. It doesn't matter. This comes from New York Times, written by David Streetfield. Did I get it right? Streetfeld, excuse me. If AI can do your job, maybe it can also replace your CEO. We are, we are in the midst of this AI... Not uprising, because that's not the word I'm looking for. But AI is rapidly evolving. I, I believe even this morning when I was at the gym, I got a New York Times notification saying that, or a push alert, stating that ChatGPT, OpenAI, is already working on the next iteration of ChatGPT, which would be ChatGPT5. And they just updated the the bot to ChatGPT40 with the talking and the video in the in the glavin <laughs> I'm going right in for for more Simpsons references in my thing. I watch I watch my things in my podcast. I watch the Simpsons every single day. That's not a joke. Every single season from season 1 to season 34. I do believe seasons 1 and 2 are uh boring at this point, but whatever. To each their own. I'm still one of the people that watches it every Sunday when it comes on. Did I say 32 or 34? I think it's 34 seasons. It just ended 34. Okay, anyway. And the bit one of the big worries is that companies are letting people go or or will start letting people go so that AI platforms will um take over those jobs, take over redundancies in jobs. People always talk about how AI cannot replace coders. Right now that is true. It can't replace writers. They can't replace actors. We just saw uh, Scarlett Johansson fight against, not fight, but bring up the issue against um, OpenAI's new version of ChatGPT 4.0, 
that add a voice that sounded like hers from the movie Her. Um, like sound like Scarlet's from the movie Her. People are concerned about even going to a, a McDonald's or a fast food place and, and having robots take their jobs or AI. I know AI and robots are the same thing. But if that's the, if that's the case for people who are quote-unquote expendable, I'm just going to call this quote-unquote. This is what the podcast should have been called, quote-unquote. But if, this, if that's the case for people who are in what the higher-ups would call expendable, areas of the company wouldn't that be true of them of the, of 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 your bosses and their and your bosses bosses the chief executive is increasingly imperiled by ai just like the writer of news releases and the customer service representative writes uh, mr streetfield Dark factories, which are entirely automated, automated, <laughs> may soon have a counterpart at the top of the corporation. Dark suites. This is not just a prediction. A successful, a few successful companies have begun to publicly experiment with the notion of an AI leader, even if at the moment it might largely be a branding exercise. Couldn't you see in, you know, 30 years, I mean, as quickly as chat bots or, or AI bots are becoming commonplace, I could see it in 10. But couldn't you see a, a company, an actual company, you know, a company, uh, let's see, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick something up. Like a company that, like Case Logic. this is a hard drive case, if you can see it, you probably can't see it, it's too bright. But couldn't you see them implementing something along these lines of a leader, an AI leader who's a co-president or the vice president and let that thing, not that thing, let the bot make decisions. edX, the online learning platform created by administrators at Harvard and MIT that is now a part of the publicly traded 2U Incorporated, surveyed hundreds, hundreds, <laughs> hundreds of chief executives and other executives last summer about the issue. Respondents were invited to take part and given what edX calls a small monetary incentive to do so. The response was striking. Nearly half, 47% of the executives surveyed said they believed that most or all of the chief executive role should be completely automated or place, replaced by AI. Even executives believe executives are superfluous in the late digital age. Oof, boy. Oh, my God. What are we if not just fodder for the for the higher ups who who say that even they can be replaced? This is uh, working for robots, which is, again I don't think chatbots are robots. I don't think AI is robot. AI is not robot. But this has been an idea thrown about as early as 1939 in a story by David C. Cook in a pulp magazine called uh, simply Science Fiction. It was not an empowering tale of mentorship and mutual support. This AI, it's increasingly, we're letting, we're letting this tool these tools take over the live, take over our lives. And, and while it was, you know, last year, as much as I can remember is when these be started becoming rapidly more popular because AI did exist. I mean, Siri, Bing, Google assistant, the, like everything, even prior to that, AI still was, if not, if not, uh, if not uh, behind the scenes, nascent. It was just a tiny little baby. But as we rapidly bring AI into our into our world, into our daily lives, even Apple's Apple uh, wants to bring Chat GPT or excuse me, Open AI in as a partner somehow, so that they can provide Chat GPT on iPhones, so that they don't have to build their own 
uh, I mean, Siri, again, Siri stinks. So they have to build their own uh, AI uh, platform. Uh, Samsung released the Galaxy S24 series of phones. And, and with that, it brought uh, a lot of AI enhancements as opposed to physical enhancements to the phone. Uh, and and they even brought some of those AI enhancements down to the S23 and S22 and S21 series and other Samsung phones and uh, tablets and, and whatnot. We're gonna we're gonna see AI as a part of our lives from this point forward. And if you're not gonna be, or if you're gonna be replaced by your by uh, at your job by somebody uh, by by a uh, 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 an AI platform, then the same could come for somebody uh, in a position that laid you off originally. I'd love to go back to Bounce TV and have those people laid off, replaced by chatbots. And I'm not talking about AI. I'm talking about by chatbots. <laughs> Just as much as motion when they're laying somebody off. It, it's we just need to keep a tab on the type of explosions we're having with this the 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 as as we're moving along forward and we're rapidly building upon these tools uh i think it's just important to make sure that we're not becoming reliant on them we should be able as a human race to write with a clear legible handwriting but even even I am seeing a previously sloppy handwriting, admittedly previously sloppy handwriting, turn into uh, uh, just gobbledygook, and it doesn't make sense. And now to that end, let's not be let's not let AI become the thing that runs our lives, because then that's how you get Wally. That's how you get a bunch of fat blobs who can't stand and then they have to leave earth and then a a robot who's lonely, who loves watching uh, bad musicals (laughs) comes in this, comes to space with his robot girlfriend. Am I just recounting the plot of Wally? This is not interesting. Uh, Two Sundays ago, I woke up because of the pets and I was sitting on the couch uh, it was like 7.30 in the morning and I, w- and I just I wanted to just turn something on because <laughs> I, c- I can't possibly sit with my own brain <laughs> you see what happens you just, you've heard these three podcasts I put out a week and I turned on The Good Dinosaur and boy howdy that movie stinks <laughs> I saw it in theaters and I didn't like it I said let me give it one more shot uh, about 12 years later <laughs> Or whatever it came out. Was that 2016? Let me see. Also, I don't know how time works. It's eight years. It was 2015. So it was nine years. Cool. Let's not become reliant on on, uh, on AI. Okay. Listen, uh, if you like what you heard here, don't know why you would. Head to the website, cpluscomedy.com, where you can see me talk to your favorite famous people. True or false, I've had two run-ins <laughs> with uh, celebrities in the past couple of weeks. At my gym. I'm not going to say anything else. They're not negative run-ins. They were just like, oh, you go to my gym. <laughs> Although I did talk to one. He was in front of the, these boxes. And he was like, you using these boxes? He's like, <laughs> He's literally saying, he's like, yeah, go ahead. It wasn't Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you want to see the video version of the show, head to youtube.com slash comedy. You can see video versions of the other podcasts, uh, The Constitutionals, which is the entertainment business news podcast, and Late Night Lately, which is the late, late night show show. Um, you can uh, 
see subscribe to those wherever you get your podcasts. You can go to follow us on social media. TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at C Plus Comedy. Me on those platforms, at Chad Black White. Thank you so much for listening. Goodbye.